checking and testing the uh, beauty device kind of face brush and I made an earlier video about it uh, this is only a vlog so perhaps not very interesting but I want to give say kind of uh, good tips that could be useful anyway here is that a driver unit again and like I told in the early video here there is a coil and when we look at the coil we see uh, not too many windings we also see a very uh, thick wire that means that such a coil when you look at it uh, functions has to function on uh, a quite high current and after testing it I found that uh, here the two um, uh, nickel manganine uh, batteries were okay or not okay I cannot uh, surely uh, say that at the moment but I have uh, paralleled they were here in the device here and here and I took them out, uh, they are often glued in these devices, that's more or less my experience anyway. And a good thing to test that is to uh, leave the battery inside and then make two separate contacts here that uh, are parallel to the battery contacts. The reason is that when you apply um, a certain voltage here, and I do that with my um, voltage apply on the workbench, uh, and when you apply it directly here out of that uh, workbench supply <coughs> and connect it here directly to the circuit, it could be that um, uh, when you set the voltage to a certain um, level and especially the current that's of course important this coil needs a current to work that means that the wattage so the voltage uh, multiplied by the amperage is uh, quite high to, to make this circuit work and the best thing in such a situation is to uh, say make connections here to the original battery and uh, I mean not the battery but uh, yes the battery sorry for that uh, the nickel manganine hydride battery and then uh, apply to the here to these two electrodes a certain voltage and a certain current and the internal resistance of that battery will say in a certain way limit the maximum current that your voltage supply can give. Uh, sounds a little bit complicated is of course not complicated when we uh, look at Ohm's law. In fact it means that this, this uh, battery starts to take up current it starts to get charged that means that current flows here into the battery um, and at the same time that battery gives out the right current here to the device uh, well that was more or less all to tell it acts as a kind of buffer uh, the battery in such a case when you bridge the contacts and uh, start to charge them in a more or less uh, simple way via DC source like this the battery will uh, take up current and that means that the current at least when you make the voltage here not too high um, is okay and the circuit can work again and when you directly connect here your uh, workbench 
voltage supply, voltage and current supply. Uh, it works in this case on 2.4 volts. That's also very important. That means that a sub substantial current is necessary to make it work. Uh, when you connect directly your voltage supply, it could be that the whole circuit burns out more or less immediately. But when you use the original battery as a kind of buffer, and of course in such a case the battery must be healthy. Uh, for instance, when the internal resistance here in such an old battery is too high, and you drive up the voltage of your workbench, a uh, power supply, uh, you could, could get into the same situation where the voltage on that unit here is too high. Has everything to do with Ohm's law. Anyway, let's try. I now connect here um, uh, the two clips that go to the original position of the, of the circuit, of the uh, vibrator, more or less vibrator circuit. And um, at first I connect now here this clip. Because when I switch on the power supply, it's the same problem. When I switch, switch on the power supply, <coughs> uh, it could be that the current and the voltage on this location is too high. So I, ne I need this original battery as a kind of buffer, as a kind of um, resistance. Not only a resistance, but all at the same time a voltage and current supply. So this is the first thing to do in this test situation here. Connect the clip and after that, after that, after I've made this connection and the whole circuit is more or less um, in the original state, apart from the fact that it is not charged here via that AC source and that was in an earlier video. And now I put on my workbench power supply and I go especially uh, to the zero voltage here. So now the whole uh, unit here, both the battery and the uh, device, does not take current. So I slowly, very very slowly, push up the voltage. Look at the ampere meter here at the same time. Don't go to a too high voltage, say 3 volts, that's okay. You can also see that the meter here works not very stable. Anyway, I push now the button here, the on and off button. And the whole circuit starts to work properly. That gives uh, some conclusions, of course. Uh, the first conclusion is that the whole circuit is in fact okay. Uh, the problem could be that the uh, nickel manganine hydride battery is not charged. Uh, could be that the charger, charger doesn't work. Well, I don't think that that is the case. I think the charger is okay, but the unit here inside, the electronic unit that has to uh, uh, drive and charge the two uh, nickel manganine uh, batteries is not okay. And here you see, that's perhaps interesting to show, the vibrations. And here the vibrations on the, uh, the brush. And you can set here the, the way that the circuit works. Uh, I only have one hand, so I cannot demonstrate that properly. But anyway, the circuit works. So there is some hope. But on the other hand, uh, I cannot advise to do this repair. Because um, the charger doesn't work, um, 
you will never get the whole circuit uh, watertight again, etc, etc. So, this is a disclaimer. And I only wanted to show how in such a uh, in such a critical situation in such a critical situation uh, you have to um, take care and be very careful not to um, lift up the voltage here to that unit to a somewhat too high voltage and then I mean a higher voltage that uh, then compared to the uh, battery voltage of the two uh, nickel manganine hydride cells. And these cells, when you bridge them and uh, try to charge them or charge them with the help of that voltage supply, um, will act as a buffer where at the same time the voltage cannot get too high so high say 3 volts or so and with 3 or 4 volts the whole electronic unit will surely be damaged absolutely sure so that was the aim of this video not to make this whole unit work again etc etc but as a kind of demonstration how Ohm's law works in practice. And this is how Ohm's law works in practice. Thanks for watching.